Greetings, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Bob Barber here, here with the next Rapture Resurrection Report. The report that focuses on unique data and show you how it points to the soon Rapture Resurrection of the Church. So if information like this sounds good to you, make sure hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new reports that we have coming out. In this report today, we are going to be talking about more confirmations about the seven-year warning that we are currently in right now that began on September 23rd with the Feast of Trumpets back in 2017, marked by the Revelation 12 sign, and it will come to an end right at the Feast of Trumpets on October 2nd, 2024. Now, if you didn't watch our prior Rapture Resurrection reports, Trumpets Celestial Convergence, Final End Times Timeline 2014 to 2031, Rapture Resurrection. The link to that is in the description box below. Please go check that out first and then come back and watch this video. That way this whole thing will make a whole lot more sense to you. Okay, but if you already watched it, great. Let's move forward. Now, like I said before, we are in the midst of a seven year warning that started on day one of the warning with the Revelation 12 sign on September 23rd, 2017. And this seven year warning will expire on October 1st, this year, 2024, and that will be the end of it. And then a whole new seven year count will begin with day one, which would be October 2nd, Tishri 1, the Feast of Trumpets, Rosh Hashanah, the head of the year. Now, in the prior video, I went into a whole plethora of studies of why this is a seven-year warning for us. And this warning is the warning of the beginning of the seven-year tribulation and also signaling that the rapture resurrection is upon us. Now, quick disclaimer, I'm not saying for sure that the rapture resurrection and or the tribulation will begin on October 2nd because even though the data looks solid here, the Bible does say in Matthew 24, 22, when Jesus said that these days will be shortened. So the exact start and end date is unknown, dealing with Daniel's 70th week, which means the start of Daniel's 70th week can be delayed. Whether God removes all the time from the beginning of Daniel's 70th week, or he cuts a little bit of time from the beginning and cuts a little bit of time from the end, we don't know. And God's not going to delete days. He's not going to delete hours and weeks and months. No, that's all going to stay solid. It's a seven-year period. But the activities dealing with the tribulation will only run maybe, for example, six and a half years within the confines of the seven-year period. This makes sense to me because if he shortens days and removes days and weeks and stuff like that, that'll mess up the calendar going forward. So with that being said, all we know for sure is the tribulation is in the next seven year period. This is why we received all these warnings in this current seven year period that we're in right now. So if nothing happens on October 2nd, this information still applies going forward. We just don't know how long. Now, like we talked about before, this whole seven year warning period it all started with the Revelation 12 sign on day one, where we see a picture of a woman giving birth. This woman represents corporate Israel, and the man-child represents the body of Christ, the current church, the current guard, here on the earth being built within the confines of the Age of Grace, which is about to come to an end. The rapture resurrection event takes place right after the birth of this man-child. Revelation chapter 12, verse five. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne, which will be the rapture resurrection event. This is what it says in Revelation chapter 12, that the child is caught up as soon as it is born. Isaiah 66, seven says, before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she delivered a man-child. What does that mean there? Before she travailed, the time of her trouble, Israel's trouble, the time of Jacob's trouble, Daniel's 70th week, the tribulation, before her pain came, she was conceived a man-child. Proof of the pre-tribulation rapture, okay? 
So all in all, we see a woman giving birth to a man-child and a seven-year count that follows it. So since that's the case, we need to go back and look in the Bible and examine all the verses we can that deals with a woman giving birth to a man-child and how the number seven applies to it. First, we'll go back to Leviticus chapter 12, starting verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a woman have conceived seed and born a man-child, then she shall be unclean seven days according to the days of the separation for her infirmity shall she be unclean. And in the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. So, according to this, we see the birth of the man-child in the Revelation 12 sign. And instead of seven days, we see seven years. And I know a lot of you are going to be like, no, hold on a second there, Brother Bob. Where do you get this whole silly seven days converted to seven years thing? That doesn't say that anywhere in the Bible. Stop making stuff up. False prophet. First of all, not a prophet. Prophets don't use charts. Okay. And plus, I'm just not saying, thus saith the Lord, that's what the Lord showed me to tell you. No, that's not happening here. Okay. I am an end times analyst. All right, I analyze information, then I show you what I found. So, as I was saying, where do we see seven days converted into seven years in the Bible? Well, if you read your Bible, you would know that there are occurrences in the Bible where God punishes corporate Israel by converting a day to a year because of their rebellion. For example, Numbers 14.34, After the number of the days in which ye search the land, even 40 days each day for a year there you go shall ye bear your iniquities even 40 years and ye shall know my breach of promise so 40 days got converted into 40 years because of their rebellion not convinced let's go to ezekiel 4, 6. This is when the prophet Ezekiel had to lay on one side and then flip over. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Okay, that's why we can see the conversion here from seven days to seven years. Okay? A year for a day moving on where else do we see the seven-year count of uncleanliness we see that in Leviticus 833 and ye shall go out of the door of the tabernacle of the congregation in seven days until the days of your consecration be at an end for seven days shall he consecrate you this was when Aaron and his sons were consecrated to become priests of the temple. And what does it mean to consecrate? It means to sanctify. It means to hollow somebody is in a new position. It means to declare somebody in a new position, a declaration. And how does this apply to the Revelation 12 sign? Well, the woman is being cleaned, consecrated, sanctified, for that count of seven days just like we saw right here and it's been translated to seven years consecration like i said means declaration sanctification a ceremony and for the last seven years god has been performing a celestial ceremony in the heavens for the last seven years declaring the soon sanctification consecration of israel which will be achieved at the end of the 70 tribulation and the coming man child that will be born at the end of the seven year warning so family i hope you're sharing the gospel i hope you're getting the word out because we're about to leave here and if you feel like that you're not doing enough to reach the lost here in these final hours then you need to check out this next quick clip and then we'll be right back after this quick break hey you listening right now do you feel that tug in your heart right now to do something to help reach the lost to help lead more people to the saving grace of jesus christ but you don't know where to start who to team up with 
or how you should go about doing it. And especially if you want to do it on a large scale. Are you that person where God did not give you your own church, your own pulpit, your own YouTube channel, or even the time to go out and be a missionary or stand on a street corner, but instead he blessed you with some wealth? The Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8, when it comes to building the kingdom, there are those who plant and then there are those who water. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. So you have the investor and the worker and everybody receives the same reward. When you invest into the body of Christ through Feed My Sheep Today, you are financially sowing a seed, essentially planting it into the work of the missionary and the missionary is watering that seed cultivating it as it grows so as you can see in order to build the body of christ it takes an investor and it takes a worker you are the investor and here's the best part about it you will receive the same rewards as a missionary at the judgment seat of christ because it says that the planter and the water are one one in the same job so they both get rewarded the same and family there are millions and millions of people just like this out there that still need to be reached. And the only way that they can be reached is through your financial support. Yes, I know. Unfortunately, it takes money to buy all of the Bibles, the humanitarian relief aid, and on top of all that, provide all the transportation that's needed to get all of this to these areas. The good news is we won't be needing money much longer to do this work. But until then, this is how we have to do it. And family, the word's getting out about what we're doing. There are large crowds gathering everywhere we go. The Holy Spirit is orchestrating this whole thing. And when our missionaries show up to these areas, they need to be ready with enough Bibles and everything. The last thing any of us want to see is that one new believer in the area that doesn't get a free Bible when everybody else did because we ran out of Bibles. So the more Bibles we are able to buy, the less likely that is to happen. Have you heard enough? Are you ready to make your impact? This is how you do it. All you have to do is go to our official website. It's feedmysheeptoday.org. Link is in the description box below. There you can give by credit card, PayPal, bank draft, and many other online options as well like Google Pay and more. And family, check this out. Now you can easily convert crypto and stocks into a donation as well. Any stock, any crypto, as easy as one, two, three, and you're done. Or if you don't want to mess with any of this, all you have to do is just pick up your smartphone and text SHEEP to 801 801 and you can very easily give right there don't like giving online no problem send your support by mail to feed my sheep today p.o box 568 Sherville, indiana 46375 want to make a big impact but don't have the money to do it right now just become an easy feed monthly sustainer we greatly need monthly sustainers this allows feed my sheep today to plan for next month by making solid commitments to the leadership in these areas that we will be visiting because we know that the funds will be there at this point next month to take care of their needs. Plus, it's easier for you. Just set it and forget it. And this frees you up to do other things for the Lord while this is working on automatic on your behalf. And you can easily make changes at any time. And make sure to track your investment by following all of our other social media platforms. Links are in the description box below. Feed My Sheep today is ready to partner with you to make your impact in God's kingdom today. Thank you all so much for the many years of support. Let's finish strong together and may God bless you all welcome back family so folks you can see how these verses I've been sharing with you in this video point at this seven-year period warning that we're in right now as a legit time of warning that the Lord is giving us before the beginning of Daniel's 70th week and just for good measure I'd like to give you one more verse dealing with the seventh count of warning and punishment 
that's dealt out to a woman who was rebellious to her father in the camp of Israel. We see this in Numbers chapter 12, starting in verse 14, where Moses went to the Lord about Miriam, who was a woman who was being rebellious to her father. And this is what happened. Verse 14, And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out of the camp seven days, and after that, let her be received in again. And Miriam was shut out of the camp for seven days, and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. Now some of you are saying, well, Bob, that was seven days. How does that translate to seven years? It's just one person. Exactly. Look, the translation of days to years is only applied to corporate Israel, the corporate woman, Israel as a whole, the bride of God. The day to year conversion does not apply to individual Jewish women. It would just be too much. It would be too long. It wouldn't make sense. They couldn't put her out of the camp for seven years. That's too long of a punishment. Look, the lifespans weren't that long. Seven years is too long, but seven days works just fine. And what did we see here in Revelation 12 sign? A picture of corporate Israel. So that's why the seven day counts that are applied to individual Jewish women and typologies in the Bible I just showed you are converted into years for corporate Israel. And this was a corporate Israel sign, the Revelation 12 sign. According to all these verses I just showed you, this proves that we are in a seven year warning, a seven year ceremony being performed in the heavens by God, a seven year declaration of what is to come, which will be a seven year time of consecration, sanctification of corporate Israel during the time of Daniel's 70th week. And just like Miriam, who was rebellious to her father, corporate Israel is rebellious to their heavenly father. And like Miriam, they will be shut out of the camp for seven days. Corporate Israel, seven years. Daniel's 70th week. Shut up from the presence of God until their time of sanctification, consecration is complete. And then millennial reign will begin and they are welcomed back into the camp just like Miriam. So these are some of the verses that proves my point that we are in a seven year warning for a multitude of biblical reasons. I didn't even mention the fact that Noah and his family had to wait inside the ark for seven days before judgment came. That's in Genesis 7, 4. There's another one. I think I made my point. This seven year warning is solid, is biblical, and is coming to an end here. This upcoming October 1st into October 2nd, because we know it's a Hebrew day. After the seven years is over, the seven counts over, and then on the beginning of the eighth day, which would be in this application, the eighth year, which will be year one of the next seven years, which we believe to be Daniel's 70th week, the seven year tribulation. Going back to what we talked about earlier in Leviticus chapter 12, where the woman who gave birth to the man-child is clean after seven days, and then on the eighth day, the man-child receives a physical circumcision that marks him for the eternal promises of Abraham. That man-child receives a physical alteration, which is his circumcision. And how does this apply to us, the man-child, at the rapture resurrection? We will receive a supernatural circumcision, a circumcision made without hands that changes us from mortal to immortality. And we see this in Colossians 2 verse 12. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Verse 12, buried with him in baptism wherein also ye are risen with him, that's rapture resurrection, through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead operation of God think about it when a circumcision takes place in the natural here that's an operation but God being the ultimate surgeon he's going to do his own operation on us his own circumcision when he changes our bodies from mortal to immortality now the moment we believe the gospel of Jesus Christ our spirits were circumcised by the Holy Spirit. Completely reborn, as Jesus said, you have to be reborn spiritually, 
And then Ephesians 4.30 says we are sealed at this point unto the day of redemption, or in other words, for the purpose of the day of redemption. And think a minute about a circumcision when it's done to a man-child. Can that circumcision be undone? No, it's permanent. Just like our circumcision, being born again spiritually is permanent. So like I said, Ephesians 4.30, after this circumcision, we are sealed unto the day of redemption, the rapture resurrection, which will be the circumcision of our physical bodies made without hands, just like our spirits were circumcised without hands. Both our spirit and our bodies were dead to God before Christ. Apostle Paul said, Ephesians 2 verse 1, and you had the quickened, spiritually circumcised, who were dead in trespasses and sins, verse 4, but God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, spiritually uncircumcised, hath quickened us, circumcised us, first spiritually, and then eventually, physically, at the rapture resurrection, together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And listen to this, verse 6, And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. If you take notice of the ED at the end of the word raised, Paul is speaking in past tense here. But hold on a second, this event hasn't taken place yet. What's going on here? Here Apostle Paul is addressing everybody in the present at that point, but it's already been established and accomplished on God's timeline. Do you get that? And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And this timeline that I'm referring to is what God established in eternity past. The same timeline that Apostle John saw when he wrote the book of Revelation. God already knows what's going to happen because he already created this timeline in a spiritual realm. Essentially, he created the spiritual model of our entire existence, looked at it, saw it was good, and then he created the physical model of it, which is what we're living through right now. So family, these are the biblical points that proves that we are in a seven year warning that's about to come to an end right at the Feast of Trumpets this upcoming October 2nd. Now family, we have more reports coming up. We're gonna be talking about more of what these celestial signs have pointed at that we weren't able to include in our last report. That further confirms the seven year warning, so you don't wanna miss it. So make sure to hit that subscribe button right now so you don't miss any new reports that we have coming out. And make sure to subscribe to our backup channel in the event this channel ends up taking a digital dirt nap. That link is in the description box below or just click the card above. When you get over there, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that way you will continue receiving these reports uninterrupted in case this channel goes down or gets a strike and we are down for a week or two. And family, please just hit that like button really quick on your way out. This helps us out with the algorithm. We would greatly appreciate you doing that for us. And may God bless you all and hang in there for we are almost finished. Amen. Amen.